Hey critters, welcome to today's 3D print. No live stream today. They kept pushing back getting the carports installed and they pushed it back to today. <laughs> Hopefully they show up today. So I have to take care of that. The carports are important. I have to make sure they do it right. They cover the area I need covered. So today we're going to talk about prints from the Everyone Thinker S. So far I've been pretty impressed. I will have an analysis video coming soon. For now, check out some of the prints I made. So as you guys saw, the first print was the little squirrel that came with the printer. It printed fine. No complaints, no issues. Actually, I believe this is everyone copper filament. Um, you saw the first um, vase I printed on the video, and I went way too fast. I got a little aggressive and went way, way too quick. So I reprinted it at a normal speed, and it printed perfectly, and it is watertight. So that will hold water. What's the matter, kitty? Kitty's meowing. <laughs> and um, then I printed some switch plate covers. These actually came out really nice. One of the advantages of a um, PEI style print surface is that you can get that mirror finish. So I made these switch covers that have that really nice glossy finish to them. And they printed perfectly, no issues. Still tuning the profile. I was slightly under extruding this time, but it printed fine. Also printed some doubles. These are actually made from the steampunk light switch, which I'm going to show you next. I modified these in Tinkercad to be just plain light switches. I really like the way they print. They print cleanly. I like the little chiseled edges. That came out really nice, so I'm printing a bunch of these. Um, to show you how quiet this printer is, it is printing right now while I make this video. That gives you an idea of just how quiet this thing is. The only thing that makes noise really is the fans, and even those are surprisingly quiet. The noisiest fan is, of course, the parts cooling fan. It has to run at the highest speed, but even that one is shockingly quiet. They did a really nice job on this thing so far. There's a couple of things I'd like to see fixed, but by and large, they did a really nice job. So next up was the steampunk light switch. This thing is freaking cool. I gotta reprint these in wood. For now, I just print everything in the same color. This is a single. So your light switch sticks in here, and you see there's a little arm inside there. I can show you that here. There it is. So that arm literally just toggles your switch so you just bolt this on as a replacement light switch cover glue this in place of course and now you have this cool you know Frankenstein style old school steampunk light switch now the thing is this is a single pivot going to another single pivot light switch so of course down is on and up is off well that's easy to fix just flip the light switch over not this this doesn't matter take the light switch off your wall, make sure you know what you're doing, <laughs> and flip your light switch over so that down is on and up is off, and now this will flip it again, and down, this thing goes down, which is up, is now on, and down is off. So flip your light switch over, and this will actually work up and down correctly. But that came out absolutely beautifully. You can see the, the mirror surface. What I would like to do is to um, print this this arm in like a matte black. I have some Anycubic matte filament that looks really nice. So matte black for the arm. Keep the copper for the, the, the steampunk gear thingies. I'd like to do this in the protopasta coffee. The brown glitter protopasta they have. Really beautiful color. That would, I think the switch plate itself would look beautiful in that. And of course a wood grain. A wood fill filament for the actual little bitty arm things here, these things. So print those bits in a wood grain filament. I think that would look really nice. But this is cool. They also have a double version. That's actually, here's the centerpiece. So you have this centerpiece and it would sit on top of your double plate. So this would sit in the middle like that. And then you'd have a single on each side. That would give you two light switches. 
and um, I haven't printed one of those yet, but that's how I made my switch plate covers. I'll put them up the versus a remix. Then I printed these. I thought this was really, really cool. This is kind of like a, a puzzle. So check this out. You gotta hold them together. So there you go. So you got a dog, a cat, a rabbit, and a mouse. I actually printed twice, once in the copper and once in the, this is the, actually I believe this is also everyone, silk rainbow, so it changes colors each time you print. And the cool thing about this is that I was able to then mix the parts. That's how I got the alternating colors. So here is your mouse, and then here is your rabbit, and then those three form the cat. And then all of them together form the dog. Now the other one is the opposite. I, I flipped and mixed the parts. So that one is the opposite. So you can have either set. Eventually I'll print two more so that you have four different colors per set. I think that would just look cool. I love that mirror finish. Now if you want to get that mirror finish on both sides, there actually is a trick to do that. So the trick would be... You would print the pieces on your PEI, and then you would print this with no top layers. Just stop at infill. No top layers at all. Then in your slicer, you mirror the part, and you print it again with no top layers. By having no top layers, you um, can evenly join the two pieces together. So you could take the two halves, glue them together, and because you mirrored them, each half will have that super glossy surface. So I plan to do that as well because I think these are kind of cool. And I want to have that ultra glossy surface on both sides. So that's how you do that. Um, also thicker will make this a little more stable. So I'll probably print them instead of 9 millimeters. I'll probably print them you know, 12 millimeters. So the whole thing will be 24 millimeters. Um, printed a set of these in like 4 hours. So it's pretty quick too. But that's how you'd get that mirror finish on both sides. If you um, are not that great at bed leveling, make sure you um, flip the mag plate over, put some tape down, and practice getting your bed level right, because any mar you make in the surface of the model, will, or a surface of your PEI, will transfer to your future prints. Let me show you one, so you can see here. You can see the, there it is. See that set of lines on there? Okay. Those lines are a, a small mark in the PEI. It's one of the downfalls of PEI is that it doesn't take much to... It's not damaged per se, it looks fine, but that's enough to transfer an image on a super glossy surface onto your print. So that is one way to take care of that. And the last print I made in the set. I made this. I thought it was going to be pretty cool. So this is just a simple little container that holds the cotton round makeup cleaning swab thingies, which I don't have any, and Q-tips. So I thought that was pretty neat. I printed that. And my sister actually uses these things, so I made her a pink and purple one. Again, using the Airy One silk transition filament. So you see it's transitioning from like a purple to a pink to like a silver, purple, silver gray. So that will be for her table. Of course, you know, still has that super glossy surface. But there you go. I printed those two. I really love the steampunk switch. I'm going to do more with this. I'm going to have a lot of fun with that. I'm going to do a multicolor one. I also want to try to do my multi G code, like Jurassic Park kind of thing, but with the PEI. So far, the surface sticks amazingly well. I have no peeling, I have no lifting. So, whatever they're using works. <laughs> But I want to uh, do multi color in the glossy. So that you'll have that super glossy finish. I think that would be kind of cool. And I, if you guys know of any more like this, of these prints where you know, the multiple pieces insert together to form a new shape each time it goes larger, if you guys know of any more like that, let me know. I know this creator here has a couple. I will try to find where I got all these and link them in the description down below. 
So down below with my affiliate links and all of that at the top, there will be um, hopefully the links to all these files on Thingiverse. And um, I'm not going to post my switch covers until I verify they fit. They should. I didn't. All I did was fill in the holes. So when you print this, you can see it has these extra four holes for these things to fit. All I did was fill those holes in, so it should still be dimensionally correct. Um, so far, I don't see any major noise from the um, two tight wheels. Looks like they're right on the edge of where they're going to create problems. They might wear in over time. I would still like to see them add eccentric nuts, but we'll see. But as you can see, the vase mode and regular prints come out just fine. In fact, little weirdness like that right there. That could be from one of the wheels or something else. I'm not sure. It's not a hole because it's still airtight. So this is airtight and watertight. Basically, if it's airtight, it's going to be watertight. But overall, working great. Parts fit together well. Tolerances fit together well. So it's calibrated, looks like reasonably properly. I will have, hopefully in a few days, an analysis video over what I like and don't like and what I would correct or not correct in the printer. Um, that's it. I will see you guys later. Be sure to check out. I have a new... Um, I finally reused my domain name, nerys.com to um, create a portal to all of my sites. So my picture sites and all my YouTube channels. So if you go to nerys.com, you can see, obviously, a link to this channel, Life of Nerys, if you want to see more stuff about the carports and stuff like that. And um, as I record content, I will post it and go from there. So stay tuned next week. We will have the, I got it in the mail. It's actually sitting in the back of the car right now. Uh, I got the Ender 3 version 2. So we will be doing that in a live stream next week. So stay tuned for that. And I will see you guys later. Thank you very much to all my Patreons. Thank you very much to the people using the affiliate links. I appreciate it so much. And I will see you all later.